Hello everyone. Now I am going to start second third lecture of the root locus. So we, before moving towards uh, third lecture, let us summarize previous lecture. So first part we discussed in previous lecture that is magnitude of gh h g h that is equal to one. Magnitude of gh g h is equal to one. So uh, now come to angle of GH. So what angle we obtain? Angle of GH will be 2Q plus 1 multiplied by 180. Plus sign is used for the counterclockwise moment. Minus sign is used for the clockwise moment. Now come to number of root loci. So number of root loci is simply based on the highest order present either in the numerator or in the denominator of S. For example, if there are n number of poles and m number of open loop zeros and if n is more than m so number of root loci will be n and if m is more than m n in this case number of root loci will be n right now fourth part we discussed that existence of root loci on real axis so for this case simply take a test point and count the number of poles and zeros right side of, of that test point if addition of these poles and zeros are odd number so th that test point will be part of root locus otherwise it will not now come to check a starting point of the root loci so for this just consider open loop system not open loop system simply open loop transfer function that is equal to k times s plus z1 s plus z2 into s plus zm means n number of zeros which are represented in terms of factor form and s plus p1 s plus p2 into s plus pn means n number of poles which are represent, represented in factor form now in sim simple form they can be written as k times this sign is the product product of s plus z i i starting from 1 to m upon product of s plus p j j is starting from 1 to n this sign this pi is used for the multiplication okay so from here what what will be characteristic equation 1 plus g h is equal to 0 now put this value here so we will get k times s plus z i I starting from 1 to m and s plus pj j starting from 1 to n plus 1 is equal to 0 now take lcm do the cross multiplication so we will get k times i is equal to 1 i is equal to uh, 1 to m s plus zi plus product of s plus pj j starting from 1 to n is equal to 0 so in this equation now if we put k as a 0 in this equation if we put k as a 0 so it means this entire term this entire term is getting 0 this entire term is getting 0 so what information we obtain we will get product of s plus pj j starting from 1 to n is equal to 0 it means from here we will get s plus s plus p1 is equal to 0 s plus p2 is equal to 0 and so on it means if we plot root locus if we plot root locus with k starting from 0 so at a starting there will be poles at a starting there will be poles because if we are putting k is equal to 0 so we are getting poles right so remember this thing that root locus always start from its open loop poles now 
let us come to check terminating point of the root loci so again this equation is same and it is again written in terms of factor form okay in, in simple way now come to characteristic equation put again this value here so we will get this equation just like in the in previous case now just divide this equation divide this equation by k both side so we will get this term and now if this k is tending towards infinite if this k is tending towards infinite it means we will get this term as a zero this term as a because something upon infinite that is going towards zero so we will get product of s plus z i i starting from 1 to m is equal to 0 means simply now in this case we are getting s plus z1 is equal to 0 s plus z2 is equal to 0 and so on it means if we are plotting root locus with uh, z and uh, with sorry with gain k tending towards infinite so we are getting their zeros so rem so remember this thing that root locus always terminates at its zeros so these uh, from here two information we obtain that one thing is that whenever we plot root locus so it will start from its open loop poles and it will terminate at its open loop zeros at its open loop poles k is zero at its open loop zeros k is infinite so remember these two points okay now we come to, we are going to move for we are moving forward that is symmetry of root loci so we know that if there are complex poles and complex zeros so they always appear in pair form if there are complex poles and complex zeros so they appear in pair form for example if one is let us take one plus j two just for example that is minus 1 plus j2 so other will appear like minus 1 minus j2 okay so it means root locus is always symmetrical about the real axis so remember these points because of pair form of the Root, uh, means uh, open loop either poles or open loop zeros if they are they are complex so it is always root locus is always symmetrical about the real axis it means if the information for the upper half of the root locus is known so lower half can be directly obtained by taking mirror image along the real axis right now come to angle of uh, now come to asymptotes so uh, from the previous information till now what we obtain that root locus always start from its open loop poles and it terminates at its open loop zeros it means if there are n number of poles m number of zeros and if they are equal so simply uh, for example if it just we just taken that is r means R number of root locus will originate from their poles and they will terminate to their respective zeros but problem arises that if n is more than m so out of n a small m number of root locus will start from its poles and terminate at their respective zeros but remaining n minus m number of root loci will start from its poles from its poles and will terminate at infinity and when they are approaching towards infinity they will travel along a straight line and this is known as 
asymptotes remember the root loci which are traveling towards infinity and they will travel along a straight a straight path and this path is known as asymptotes now come to feature of asymptotes so first point is that they always intersect the real axis at a common point and this common point is known as asymptotes or it is also known as centroid a center of asymptotes or it is also known as centroid okay so to find out centroid there is a one formula that for the centroid that is sum of real part of the poles of gh minus sum of real part of zeros of gh upon number of poles minus number of zeros okay now we know that whenever there is a complex either complex poles or complex zeros so there will appear in pair form so if we add them so obviously imaginary part is going to cancel out okay so that is why it can be directly written that is sum of poles of gh minus sum of zeros of gh upon number of poles minus number of zeros one more property it has that is it always it is it is always having real part no imaginary part within this okay and it may be positive or negative now come to find out angle of asymptotes so all asymptotes all asymptotes that are present they will form certain angle with the positive real axis and this angle is known as angle of asymptotes right so it can be obtained using formula 2q plus 1 into 180 upon number of poles minus number of zeros or it can be written as 2q plus 1 into 180 upon n minus m where n is the number of poles m is the number of zeros q may be 0 1 2 up to n minus m minus 1 right now let us take example based on this so there is a open loop poles uh, there open loop there is a open loop transfer function that is gh is equal to k times s plus 1 into s plus 2 upon s times s plus 3 into s plus 4 where uh, there there are two zeros at s is equal to minus 1 s is equal to minus 2 and three poles s is equal to 0 s is equal to minus 3 s is equal to minus 4 right now let us find out centroid so <clears throat> in case of centroid sum of poles of gh so sum of poles will be 0 minus 3 minus 4 that is minus 7 sum of zeros of gh that is minus 1 minus 2 that is minus 3 so put in the formula so minus 7 minus minus 3 upon number of poles 3 minus number of zeros that is 2 so this become minus 4 by 1 that is minus 1 Means centroid is minus four. Okay, means if asymptotes is there, so it will pass at from its minus four point on the S plane. Now come to find out number of asymptotes. So it has three poles, two zeros. So number of asymptotes will be three minus two, that is one. Now come to find out angle of asymptotes. So there is only One asymptote. So now put here Q as a zero. Here put here Q as a zero to get first asymptote. So that is so, and here it will be three minus two. That is one. So this become one upon one into one eighty. Means angle of asymptotes will be one eighty. Now let us come to draw. Firstly draw the poles. So poles are represented with the cross sign zero. At s equal to minus three, s equal to minus four. Now let us come to draw for the zeros. So zeros draw are drawn with the small circle. At s equal to minus two, s equal to minus one. And now check which region is part of root locus. So from zero to minus one. So right side of this there is a one pole. That one is the odd. It means it is a part of root locus. Now come to draw check for the minus one to minus two in minus one to minus two right side of this there are one pole and one zero so addition of one plus one that is two which is even number so minus one to minus two is not part of root locus 
now let us check from minus 2 to minus 3 so right side of this there are two zeros one pole so that is become 2 plus 1 that is 3 which is odd it means it is part of root locus now let us come to check from minus 3 to minus 4 so right, right, right side from minus 3 to minus 4 there are two poles and two zeros so 2 plus 2 that is 4 which is even it means it is not part of root locus now let us check from minus 4 to minus infinite so right side of this there are three poles and two zeros so which is 3 plus plus 2 that is 5 which is odd it means this is part of root locus now one pole uh, one root loci will start from 0 and it will terminate at minus 1 one root loci will start from minus 3 it will terminate at minus 2 one root loci will start from minus 4 but now there is no presence of other zeros so obviously it will terminate at infinity so what will be angle formed by this so simply uh, firstly we obtained centroid so centroid is at minus 4 minus 4 is centroid and it will make at minus 180 degree from the positive real axis this is direction of positive real axis so from here it will make 180 degree this is plus 180 plus 180 it means it will follow this path means it is following this path okay done